Hello, uh, we're going to talk about the Elastic Potential Store today. The Elastic Potential Store is uh, where energy is stored by the deformation, that's the change in shape, or the stretching, which is really also the change in shape uh, of an object. So for instance, if I was to, uh, if I was to, I don't know, take this pen lid here, as I pull the little flippy bit on the side out of shape, then I'm adding energy to its elastic potential store. If I was to let go of this, then for a short period of time, energy is added to its kinetic store. So the elastic potential store is all about stretching or deforming objects. And the equation for that is quite simple. You've got the elastic potential energy equals half times the spring constant and that's also known as the, so it's the spring constant, but it's also known as the stiffness. And often I find it easier to think of K as how stiff an object is rather than spring constant, which can be a little bit tricky to, rem to remember exactly what that means. Half times spring constant times the extension squared. And the extension is how much longer the object gets uh, when it is stretched. So, if we look at a, an example question for this, we've got this question here, so let's read it through. If an elastic band is stretched one meter and has a spring constant of 1.5 newtons per meter, how much energy has been transferred to the elastic potential store of the elastic band? Well, first things first, let's have a look through for the numbers in the question. So we've got here one meter, which must be our extension because it says it's been stretched one meter, so it is one meter longer than it was before. And it says here it has a spring constant of 1.5 newtons per meter. So here we go, 1.5 newtons per meter. Now what it's asking us for is how much energy has been transferred to the elastic potential store. So there's the amount we're asked for. So first things first, let's write out the equation that we know is relevant for this question, the elastic potential equation. We have the elastic potential store or the elastic potential energy equals, and I'll do this in green because it's not really any of these things, 0 0.5 times the spring constant times the extension squared. Okay, so that's our equation. Now we put the numbers into that equation to make our life easier. So we still don't know what EP is, but we do know that K is, wrong pen, K is 1.5, and we know that E is just one, one squared. Um, filling in the other numbers then, we've got Something that looks like that. Okay, is there any of that we can make it simpler? Well, actually we can start working out the answer. So one squared, well, that's gonna end, leave us with one. And half times 1.5 or 0 0.5 times 1.5 is gonna give us, um, it's gonna give us 0 0.75. And then we're timesing those together. And 1 times 0 0.75, 1 times 0 0.75 uh, is going to give us, not the answer I put down a moment ago, but 0 0.75 joules, because it's energy, so it has to be in joules. So that is our final answer. Now, I wonder what would happen if we doubled the spring constant of our elastic band. Let's say we chose an elastic band that was thicker, that was harder to stretch, um, but we still stretch it just as far. Let's see what happens. So let's write down the equation again. We've got EP equals half times spring constant times extension squared. So this time we're still gonna have exactly the same half. The spring constant is gonna be twice as large. So 1.5 doubled is three and our extension is going to stay exactly the same. So, 
So what we end up with is something that looks like this, which when we work it out, one squared is one, times three is one, times half is 1.5. So, if we double the spring constant, then we end up doubling the amount of energy that has been stored in the elastic potential store of that object. One more thing to ask, what happens if instead of doubling the spring constant, we double how much it has been stretched, the extension? Well, let's have a quick look. So, same equation. So, our original spring constant was 1.5. Our original extension was 1 meter, but we're doubling it to 2 meters to see what happens. And let's work through our answer. Well, 2 squared is 4. And then let's do 1.5 times 0.5. And 1.5 times 0.5, it gives us 0.75. So then we've got, let's put some arrows in here to keep things followable, shall we? Um, and then we've got 0.75 times 4. And 0.75 times 4 is 3. So, we've, by doubling the extension, we've done a lot more than double the elastic potential energy. Uh, in fact, we've, we've times it by four. So you can see the extension has a much larger impact on the size of the elastic potential store than the spring constant does. It's, if you're trying to store energy by deforming a spring or an elastic band, it's much more efficient to simply stretch that object further than it would be to select one with a higher spring constant. Can you think of a reason why you cannot just keep stretching the object further and further? What might happen?